Everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk about poisoned blades or in this case like warp warp stone poisoned blades whatever whatever it's titled you know I'll decide by the time I actually put this up but at any rate I'm working on warlord's spine tail here or whatever his name is I'm looking and it's so funny I can see he has a little shiny reflective part where I messed up on his finger I'll go fix that later anyways the blade is one of the last things I have to do at this point, I just undercoated it in some Vallejo metal color steel just to get some metal down. And we're going to talk about how we integrate the colors of poisoned blades into this, uh, as well as do some cool, fun, fancy tricks. We're going to get fancy. So, here on my palette, which will be very zoomed in because we have to be very zoomed in for what we're going to do today, you can see I've got a little steel, a little silver, both of these from Vallejo metal color. Okay, and then here I have a little uh, process uh, green, or sorry, emerald green from FW, and then a little yellow ochre also from FW. Okay, so that's the that's the the paints du jour. So we're going to use a relatively sharp, thin brush for this. This is a size one from uh, Monument, which I quite like for this. And what we're going to do is. We're gonna focus on the under part of the blade here, right here, um, and up into this curve. So basically this area is what I'm gonna work on on camera here. And the way I'm gonna do it is by integrating in, uh, oh, we also need some black ink, I'm sorry. I also have some black ink slightly off. You can kind of see the edge of it there, but I realized I need to refresh it. It was almost dry from earlier things I was doing, okay. And you'll see. So we're going to use the same techniques of um, of creating sort of non-metallic effects on the blade. The difference is we're going to do it with purposeful color in there. So anytime we're putting on some of these inks, we're going to want to have some of the regular paint in it. So we're going to start, that is to say, we're, going to, we're not just going to use the ink alone. We're always going to have some of the, when I say regular paint, I'm sorry, I mean the metallic paint. So I'm going to start with this nice dark black green steel. Because what I want to do is determine where my shadows are going to be. And in this case, we're going to pull our shadows down to here. And I'm just going to literally do my shadows with these little sweeping vertical hashes. And then up here same thing i want the bottom side of that tip to be kind of in shadow okay so we'll kind of pull our shadows along there and everything we do is always these slow careful hatches hashes now again it's not going to be the case where uh those will necessarily remain hugely visible okay they may not they may be but the idea is we're always moving our brush in a way that is going to be uh, that's going to be instructive of kind of what we're doing there. So then what we're going to do is after I've placed sort of my deepest shadow, I want to grab a little bit of the silver, so my brightest color. And I'm going to grab just a little bit of yellow, mix it in there, just a tad of that green mix it in there because I don't want any I don't want anything to really be pure yellow the yellow is here just to yellow out the green this is going to be mostly silver there we go now that we got a nice bright you can see it you can see that yellow green reflected in there we wick off the excess and then we're going to pick where our highlights are and we're going to do the same thing so here and right here and probably that edge, right? Maybe this area right here. We'll push that right up against the the other one. We can grab a little bit of the very pure silver and we can hit just the highest highlight because that would still be reflecting, you know, sort of purely, right? Wouldn't have any of the color in it. And then from this point, we literally just start blending it all together. I know that doesn't show incredibly well, but you'll see here. We're going to work fast now. So 
we take a little bit more of that green, start mixing it in there. And then we're gonna just make little hashes here on the side. And we'll mix in a little bit more of that silver into that to kind of brighten it up. And we kind of work that. And we kind of bring in a little bit more as we get toward our, our final silver that we had there. Do the same thing again over here. The key is we're constantly just, sorry, the key is we're constantly just working the color there up into it. So I can grab some of my original silver, that brighter color, grab a little more, and we just keep making teeny tiny little baby hashes very slowly to blend it all together. Okay, and so what we get, you can see when I move the blade, I get that nice green sheen to what's going on there. Now, keep pushing that dark part down. Let's get that back really dark there. We want to really push that contrast way out there. Okay. Okay. So now what we get is something a little more like that, which you can see is a little too harsh. No problem. Grab some of our silver, some of our green, a little bit of yellow there. And then what we do is we start pulling back that edge so it's not quite as bright or not quite as just dark. Grab a little bit of that silver. Right, and the point is, is that we just keep making our little overlapping hashes. Until we get a nice smooth transition through the greens, right? Now, if you want to build that up at all, like right now, I like how that looks in reality. I don't know if you can see how green that reflects. The key is by using those little hashes, we get a lot of little overlapping colors, right? Um, and I like that effect. As usual, we're still gonna go in and do our edges. So just like any time we would do this sort of metal, we're gonna take like the pure silver and we're gonna come in and we're gonna hit just the edge. Okay. Because we always wanna make sure those edges are highly reflective. We'll need to hit this middle part here, this middle channel. So again, we'll take the side of the brush and just very lightly come right up there. Okay. So, you can see how that has that nice green glow. If you want to reinforce any of that, what you can do is take a little bit of just the ink alone here. So we take just a little bit of the green ink, but we thin it down with some water. Then we wick off all that excess liquid. We want, make sure you're touching your paper towel. When I say wick off the excess, I mean I'm just touching my brush to the paper towel. And then very lightly you come in and you just place some of that green glaze right over your transition points. And it just slightly reinforces that green sheen to what you're doing. It makes it all feel a little bit more poisonous. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go on and repeat all of this with the rest of the blade. I'm just gonna do it again up on the top part here. Same hashes. The key is we go from a very dark steel with a little black mixed in within our shadows, always mixing in the greens and the metals, and we do little hashes and we just lay them over top of each other until we get to our light point. He has a very interesting shaped sword, so it's given me a fun chance to 
you know, to play around with like unusual shapes and stuff like that. Like here at the base of the sword, we can bring that way down. So that way there's a nice dark shadow. Then mix it up into a lighter color. Some of you might wonder if you're not a long time viewer, why am I working on a dry palette when you'll often see me working on a wet palette. I always use a dry palette for metallics. I would recommend that. Um, metallics react very poorly in general with water and so this lets me very carefully control the amount of water that's in them in a much more uh, organic way and so I would recommend working dry even with the inks it means you have to work a little faster it means you have a little bit less time but in the end I think it works a lot better. So make that little edge right there so you can see what that looks like once that's properly separated because we need a little sharp edge right there. There we go. Okay. So now we've got that blade nice and green tinted so it just looks like it's sort of poisoned and kind of warp stone infused right with that gem at the hilt. So I'm going to repeat the same thing up top here and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you how we do some cool finishing to it. Okay. So back in a moment. All right, we're back and you can see we've got our blade all nice and infused. You can see how it sort of scintillates with different colors depending on how we move it, but we still got control of the light. You can see it's true on the other side as well. We did both sides. So there we got a nice little variance over the, the whole blade. We've got everything edged out, right? All the edges are still in that sharp reflective silver. So it's very important because it makes it still appear as though it pops. It still feels like metal. And, uh, you know, the key when you're working, when you're mixing your inks with your metallics is you always want to have a little drop of your metal paint in there at minimum, because that's what's going to make the ink actually adhere and, and sort of stick and be under control. Now, again, if you're going to paint sharp little thin lines like that, you really need something like Vallejo metal color to do that because it's the only paint that's like actually the only metallic that's sharp enough where I can do that, where I can literally get on my hand and draw a razor thin line like that, right? Which most gum metallics couldn't do that. So at any rate, let's do something fun, shall we? So this is a, uh, we'll get rid of our palette here for a second and let's get him in shot. All right, so we've got a poisoned blade and we want to really show that that's poisoned. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some dripping poison on that blade. This is one of the reasons I'm zoomed all the way in. Now, I don't, those of you who watch regularly, know that I don't exactly have a lot of hair on my head. I do, however, live with three golden retrievers and they have a lot of fur that constantly plagues my workbench, which is normally not a very positive aspect of my hobbying, but in this case, it will be. So here I have like a nice thick hair, a little white hair from one of them. Okay, probably came out of their tail or something. Who knows? They're shedding because it's summertime months. So. There it is. Easy to lose. All right, what we're gonna do so I don't lose this is we're gonna grab this little thing, which I set right next to here. And I'm gonna set my, my hair on top of that. That way I have it. Okay, because this is gonna be a fun thing to, to do and where I can easily lose it because it is a single strand of hair. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little dab of super glue, in this case, Zappa Gap Medium and just a very small, tiny dab. I'm gonna get an, a crappy brush that I don't care about that I'm going to literally ruin right now. I'm going to ruin it, okay? And on the corner of my wet palette, I'm gonna put out a little bit of that CA glue. And I will dry my, I will really try my best to keep this in shot, folks. I'm gonna take a little bit of that super glue I'm going to touch it right there to that space. Then I'm going to take that hair and I'm just going to set it right up against that. And what should happen 
is it should adhere just like that because it has like basically no weight. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go ahead, take some very sharp scissors, in this case my little Leatherman that I keep in my space. I'm gonna slice it, Oops, sorry, I think that was still in shot. So now I just have that little tiny hair left, okay? Then we're gonna do it again on the next little thing. Just put a little dab of super glue right there at the bottom. Grab my hair. If you have hair on your head, you can just use that. And then we're just gonna attach it. Here we go. So now I have a second little strand of hair. I'm gonna cut this one real short. Okay. So, boy, Chinoy. Stressful, huh? Okay. So, now that I've got that done, okay, we're gonna take a little more of our super glue just going to make sure that's nice and attached. All right, because we don't want to don't want it pulling off. And we're going to take a drop of it, get a nice fat drop on the end of the brush, and we're going to put a drop of it right on there. We're just trying to get little drops to it here. Okay, it's not big, it's just little tiny, little tiny drops of this super glue. And then the more it kind of hardens up, from the glue being attached, the more solid of a surface it becomes. So we get a couple little tiny guide drops and then it'll solidify. Now, what we gotta do here is let this glue dry because I need it to be completely dry for the next step. So give me just a second. Sorry, I took them off camera. I'm gonna let that glue dry and then we're gonna come back and do some real fun stuff with these. So just one moment. All right, we're back. Our glue is all dry and hopefully you can see how these tiny little beads built up where we touched it with the glue. So once that was dry, we got these little tiny starter droplets, even all the way zoomed in. I don't really know if those show. There you go, against my hand it'll show better. Okay, so now we're going to take our old friend gloss varnish. Okay, so just put a little right there. I'm just putting it right on the surface of my painting mat. And then what I'm gonna do with the glue completely dry, I have another, another cheap brush I don't really care about. And I'm gonna run that gloss varnish all up and down this thing. And where there's already those pre-established drops that the super glue made, you can see how I drag the gloss varnish across them and bada boom they build up. Now this does two things. One, it helps seal and protect our little tiny hairs, which are, you know, not that tough because it's a single strand of hair, literally. Just Sorry, just cleaning it up from the rest of the sword there, or I don't want gloss varnish. Okay, and two, it builds out that drop. You can see how now, on top of that little bead of super glue, I have this really nice sized drop of varnish, okay? So, now we let that dry. So, <laughs> back in just a second. Okay, our gloss varnish is all dry. So now's where the magic happens. We get out some Nurgle's Rot, uh, and I have the same emerald ink that I used earlier. 
So, let's take our Nurgles rod here. We're gonna use that same sharp brush. Sorry, I'm not gonna be able to fit the Nurgles rod in camera. Probably, maybe, I don't know. You can see my, look at that, look at that gross jar. Doesn't that look like Nurgles rod? Ugh, disgusting. I'm gonna have a little bit of gloss varnish in my brush, even though Nurgles rod's already kind of a glossy thing, just to thin it down. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna touch all the way down that strand. We're gonna do both sides, keep both on camera, okay? Then, so it doesn't look just yellow and gross, we take a little bit of that green ink from before, because we still want it to look like poison, and then off the dots, we just take that green ink, and while that's still wet, we work it right in there, just right in that space. Just work that ink nice and in there, water it down some, okay? And we just kind of get that up in there. And there you go, you can see now how we have these nice poisony yellow-green drops. You can kind of change this however you want. You can change the colors, you can do blood drips with this. If you use Blood for the Blood God or, you know, Tamiya X Clear or something like that. There you go, now we just let that dry. And now we've got our nice little dripping poison coming right off the blade. So I'll throw a photo of it all finished up at the end, obviously, but that's how we do our little dripping gross poison. You can build it up more if you want bigger droplets. You can do this hanging out of teeth. There's just a hundred uses for this. Uh, the key is, you know, find like a long, relatively thick strand of hair and you're good to go. So there you go. And I'll put my hand behind it here so you can really see how they came out. It's so small, the little dots on my painting matter kind of messing it up, but there you go. So, with that being said, uh, give that a like if you liked it. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Uh, if you have suggestions for future topics you'd like me to cover, go ahead and drop those down in the comments. Always appreciate that. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.